Head coach Andy Kennedy returns to a vastly different Rebel squad than last year. With the departure of three key seniors, the coach is left with a new team. Well, it is a new team based on the fact that we lost three very valuable seniors. You know, our all-time leading rebounder, a guy that had 23-10 and 10 in that SEC championship game against Florida and Murphy Holloway, uh, a walking double-double. We lost our all-time leading shot blocker and the fifth best shot blocker in the history of the SEC. Also, our third all-time leading rebounder, the winningest player in the history of the program in Reginald Buckner. And then our team MVP, uh, from my perspective, and Nick Williams, the, the voice uh, of reason in the locker room, gave us great leadership on and off the floor. With the departure of those three guys, we're, we've got to have new guys step up in expanded roles. Not only did we bring in a plethora of new players, but the guys that we had from Jarvis Summers to Snoop White to Derek Millinghouse to Martavius Newby, they have to take on expanded roles. Marshall Henderson is our only holdover who really plays the same role that he played for us last year, but he's our lone senior. Uh, and we're bringing back in DeMarco Cox and Aaron Jones, two guys that are coming off really debilitating injuries. So it has been a work in progress to this point, trying to, to forge an identity as a team and also to get these guys to understand that they are now the big boys in the room. If it is to be, it is up to them to make the necessary plays, and that is a growth process. Evident by multiple heartbreaking losses, the absence of veterans from last year's team has shown in non-conference play. 89-86 Oregon. So the Rebels have a chance. They'll set up a three opportunity here. Summers with three seconds, two seconds. He bombs a three. Got it! Jarvis Summers with point eight. The Rebels have got this game into overtime. Throws the shoulder and banks it up and in. And the Ducks finishing strong. Disappointing loss, obviously, for the Rebels. It's time for basketball in Oxford. Daniel Corsi will jump for Mercer and for Ole Miss, Anthony Perez. Quick two or, or three here. Ole Miss out of timeouts. Marshall Henderson tries a three. Got a three! So we're looking at overtime or a walk-off win for the Bears. Langston Hall behind the back for three. It's a win! What and the Mercer Bears get it done on the road. 79-76. Tie game with 15 seconds remaining. And an offensive foul called on Summers. Oliver for three. Got it off the window and in with point three. And the Flyers pull it off. Well, we're sitting nine and four as we head into SEC play. We're, we're one possession away in all four of those games from be sitting here with a different outcome. But that's basketball. Um, we challenged ourselves in our non-conference. We've put ourselves in a position that I think we've learned a lot about ourselves heading into league play. We lost a one possession game against a Kansas State team who has not lost since and have now forged them way into the top 25. We lost in overtime to an Oregon team who has only suffered one loss and is in the top 20 in the country. Uh, we had two buzzer beaters in our home building. Uh, that's probably been the most discouraging in that we've lost three times in this building in the non-league for the first time in my tenure here. And it's very, very important to protect your home floor if you expect to play meaningful basketball deep into March. Uh, but through all of these trials and tribulations, we've had opportunities to play and pick up wins against an ACC opponent in Georgia Tech, against a Big Ten opponent in Penn State, against a team that has been to two straight NCAA tournaments at Western Kentucky. So uh, we've got some wins in our pocket that I think will help us moving forward. But more than anything, the experience should benefit this team as we approach league play.